Welcome back. Hi, this is Trisha. I'm Evangelist Lorian, and we are kicking, kicking it, it with Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Today just, has been a day. It sure has. Side note: Let me just say this. Let me sh let me give a shout out to my granddaughter Octavia. Every time I see the sparkles behind mommy's head, I think of you now. <laughs> beautiful sparkles. <laughs> Mommy, look at those beautiful sparkles. <laughs> and if you don't know what we're talking about because you're only listening to us on your ears and not looking at us on YouTube, there's a beautiful lit tree behind me. Yeah. And it looks like sparkles and my four-year-old was in love. <laughs> yeah, Mama's always putting on that tree. Anyway. So I'm in First Kings in my Bible time in the morning. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I just think it's always so, con it's funny how like you're in something and then you just start looking at the world around you and stuff. Yep. So, because then I was like putting the prime minister of Israel, like, okay, well, if he was back in, what kind of king would he be? What would they say he, because they say Ahab was like the worst of the worst, right? I got to do more research on him. <laughs> I think that there was a lot. There was more bad than there were good. Some followed God, and others just did the total opposite. So, yeah, I would have to say, I wonder what they would say of, what is his name? Benjamin Netanyahu, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I personally think he, he's, he's, if we want to call him a king, but he's a prime minister. Right. I think he's really, I think he's good. But Everything to, I've seen of him seemed... Can anybody really be good in a position like that? Right. But I believe with all of my heart that Jehovah, I think, goes before his eyes. Because if you look at Israel, if, if you do a study on Israel itself, they, they're very 80% of the country 80 percent still follow the law of moses and they honor the sabbath it's crazy to everything shuts down <clears throat> pastor jordan was telling me that it's well it's crazy. not telling me but telling the church right. that and that is crazy i i but it's crazy because like there's a lot of laws what do you mean financially no, no, no. Like, they follow the law? Like, the 300 and something laws of they, the Old they, Testament? They try. They're like, that's but, a lot. <laughs> but I really believe with all of my heart that that is the reason why that country is so blessed. So, like, my thing would be is, like, does the prime minister hear from God? You know what I mean? Like, mm. does he seek after God? He may not believe that Jesus was who he said he was i don't know they don't yet right but like does he making decisions or is that just a thing of the past you know what i mean right that's what as i read these these kings and i'm like i just start been starting to think especially because like we're in like they're in a war and stuff so it's just interesting like i don't know but there was and i i preached this sunday i want to say it was the 60s Six countries, if I'm not mistaken, six countries that were surrounding them came at Israel all at one time. And if you look, Trisha, honestly, Israel is yay big. Right. I mean, it's this little speck of, of land. Right. Like, And they're so happy with their speck of land because right. it's theirs, right. right? God gave it to them. Six countries. And supernaturally, God defended them and destroyed all six. And I think to myself, are y'all bubbleheads? You're going to do this again? Like, but you're this is not worse fighting than, them. Right. You're fighting God. Right. And you can't. Right. You can't. And I just... Well, be, but they do. They don't believe, though. 
So they, yes, they're fighting God, but they believe in Allah. So look at Israel now. They're surrounded. Exactly. How long do you think this is going to last? I'm interested in seeing how long it lasts. I just, I mean, so anyway, back into what, I forgot my phone over there. So if it starts ringing, I don't know how long we are going in. It is what it is. I'm in First Kings and I started reading chapter 18. And I was like, I read chapter 18 and I was like, oh wow, this is wild. And then I did like the study of the, I did the study of chapter 18. Mm-hmm. And what stuck out to me so much was verse 21, which what it says, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21, Then Elijah approached all the people and said, How long will you hesitate between two opinions? If Yahweh is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people didn't answer him a word. They just didn't say anything. And now... Just a little backstory of maybe you're listening, you don't know what this chapter is or who Elijah is. Elijah is the prophet and the king of God. God, And the king of Israel at that time was Ahab Ahab and Queen Jezebel, (laughs) the worst of the worst. And Elijah had prayed for no rain for three years. And Ahab has been looking for Elijah to kill him because he's like, how dare you? (laughs) So then Elijah, God finally tells Elijah to go back to see Ahab. So it goes back and sees Ahab. And this is where we're at. They go up onto the mountain, Mount Carmel. Carmel, mm-hmm. is that? And Elijah says to bring everybody. You bring 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah. 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 Mm-hmm. Who eat at Jezebel's table. So Elijah's telling them to bring, telling Ahab to bring all these prophets of Baal, which Baal is the false god. And Baal is the god they believe that determines weather. The god of weather. So rain, whatnot. So again, I'm going to say Baal is rain. Asherah is the mother of Baal. Storm, sun, weather. So... You know, let me just say, Jezebel, you know, we, we, we crucify her all the time. I mean, we did a whole podcast on her. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, she's not doing anything that she doesn't know and she wasn't taught. Right, right. She was the princess of a country. Her father was a king. She was taught these things. So she's only doing what she knows. At some point, though, you have to know how mean you are. Come on. She's conniving. She's mean. She's conniving and she is she killed, a leader. She wanted because to kill she's a all princess. the prophets. Because. You can't just, like, you have your God, let us have ours. No, you have to go and kill them all. You're mean. Sorry. She is mean. She's mean. That's why she she's got, controlling. <laughs> She's so why she got what she got. She's power. Right. And Ahab is the opposite. But he's a weak individual. He's the opposite. She holds the cards. She's the powerful one in the relationship. And he is passive. He's like, okay. Sure. <laughs> you know? So we worship Baal now. <laughs> this is what we do. <laughs> and now there's no rain for three years mm. and Elijah comes back and he has all of Israel now on, on the mountain mm. and he's speaking directly to Israel. And that's what's so powerful to me is that if Yahweh, you have two opinions, you have two choices. You can either go this way or you can go that way. If Yahweh is God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. But the people didn't answer. And out of the study thing that I have, Charles Spurgeon, Mm. he put this, how long, how many more sermons do you want? How many more warnings? How many, how many sicknesses? How many tollings of the bell to warn you that you must die? How long will you go between two opinions? And I wrote, how long will you know God exists, but follow your own way of living rather than what God says? That's what we do now. But that's what I mean. How long are we going to do that? You're going to say that you 
go to church. I go to church all the time, but I'm going to go and live my life however I please. Yep. Well, what God are you serving? Because you're either serving Yahweh or you're serving yourself. It may not be Baal. You may not be sacrificing bulls and children. However, off topic. All right, so wait. When, because we do. Sacrifice children? We do. I know. I was just going to say that. Not not in the sense of, you know, let me kill them. I'm saying you sacrifice children because your children are your God. Instead of Jesus, your children, your husband, your job, your money, name it. Right. Those things are your God and then Jesus. Right. Where Jesus is is really trying to get you to, can you love me first and then trust me with everything else as you come to me as my daughter and I am your father. Can you trust me with your children? Can you trust me with your marriage? Can you trust me with your finances? Mm. And a lot of times we think God needs our help. Right. <laughs> I say you know? it all the time. We, he doesn't need an assistant. That. He has an assistant. Come on. <laughs> His name is the Holy Spirit. Come on. <laughs> but the people answered him not a word. They heard truth, like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna. You don't think though, side note, hold on. You don't think that all of Israel, as they stood there. This is before fire came down. Right. This is just. And he said, how long will you be between two opinions? If God is God, then follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. Because they were going back and forth. Right, right. Um, but don't we let me do let that. me check mark Jesus. Right. Let me check mark Baal. So I'm covered on both ends, right. just in case. But Trisha, don't you think that people do that today? Absolutely, hundred percent. Even Christians, even and this is what this is what I'm talking about. Come on, it's like oh well, I listen to some worship music in the car, and now I'm going to go in the store and be aggressive towards everybody. Or I went to I was home and was just a raging wife and mom but i worshiped and i and i read my bible in the morning you know what i mean because it's self and even as a christian we can tend to but i'm just so angry right now and everybody else needs to feel it or i'm just so sad and i don't feel like dealing with everybody else no see i think for me it's it just because that's where I'm at right now. God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I'm thinking, you know, you know, you you worship or you go to church and then you go to the club. Right. Or you go to church on a Sunday, but Sunday night you're watching the game getting drunk. Mm, or having sex or whatever right. the case. You know, it... I think it's just a matter of you having an affair and it's, you know what you're supposed to do and that you don't do. Right. Because the Holy Spirit is really good at letting us know that, yo, hey, take That's that. exactly what I wrote. There was, there's no, ob, uh, there's no objection and no repentance. Mm. They lacked the courage to either defend their position or to change it. They were willing to live unexamined lives of low conviction. We don't want to be convicted. We want to just skid by and not, and try not to. You know what I mean? I do. I think though, whether we want it or we don't want it, even when we're unsaved, conviction comes. Mm Mm-hmm. We just don't know what it is. Right. You know what I mean? Do something to hurt another human being. I beat you with a baseball bat. Or I murder you. You can't tell me that God isn't dealing with me like what you did was wrong. Mm. I mean, yes. For a Christian, I do believe that. But I do believe that in the time that we live right now... The evil 
I don't think that people have failed in conviction that are not saved, that don't know Jesus. You know what I mean? What I did was wrong. I'm just saying that because there's this cop on TikTok. Mm. He's a deputy or chief, whatever, in Florida. And he goes on TikTok and he exposes everybody that gets arrested. He shows the picture <laughs> and just blasts them, like what they did. And he said, I'm just going to keep doing this. Everyone wants to be dumb. And you want to make have these kind of crimes i'm just gonna post it on the whole world to see the one that he just did broke my heart because it was a, a girl who had gotten a fight with her boyfriend and the boyfriend walked outside and he had their 15 month old baby in his hands he took a brick and threw it on her car that made her very upset she got it came outside got in her car went to go run him over and this is all on camera from the neighbor's house. He ran away and she chased him and ran over him and the baby. Then he got out of the car, picked up the baby and left. The guy went to the hospital. He called her and said, bring the baby to the hospital. The baby needs to go to the hospital. I'm not bringing the baby to the hospital. I'm bringing him home and I'm dropping him off at home and I'm leaving. So she did. She dropped a baby off at home by himself. He went back, picked up the baby, brought him back. He's in intensive care. What I mean is there's so much evil on this earth. Like, how could you do that with no care? Like, you just didn't care. She was straight? She was straight. Hmm. She's in jail now because uh, she was at her, they, they found her. She was at her sister's house. But that's what I mean, though. Like, there is... I think that we all feel conviction in a way and we do or we don't know it, but I think that the evil that is just running on this earth is so... It's supposed to, though, because it's the end. But it's so sad to yeah. me because these kids, it's like kids after kid after kid. Yeah. Yeah. Spurgeon said, I know you are not decided in opinion because you are not decided in practice. If God be God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. You are not decided in practice. Hmm. Your opinion can be whatever, but what you're living every day is going to really prove what it is that you believe in. Right. It's either God or Baal or yourself or money or whatever it is. Because, again, I don't think that we have... I mean, I don't, know, I don't think that people are really worshipping Baal as they understand it. It's just covered up now as self or, you know, yeah. even worshiping the stars. There's a lot of people that do that. Yes. A lot. Let's go on because <clears throat> something happened here that made the people see so Elijah in the story, yeah, right? He tells the 450 men, mm -hmm. the prophets, he tells them, he lets them. He sets it all up so that they can't say that Elijah did anything. Right. He let them pick the bulls for what they were going to sacrifice and what Elijah was going to sacrifice and whatever. So the only the only thing was you can't light the fire. They have to make two altars. They have to chop up the oxes, bulls, put it on there, and then call up to your God to bring fire down to, to light it up. And now it says from the morning to the afternoon, they were just shouting like, answer us, Baal, answer us. <laughs> and there was, it says in the Bible, but there was no sound, no one answered. They then they did their lame dance around the altar they had made. Can I just stop for one second though? <laughs> These people imagine if God's people worship and prayed like the people that worship and pray false gods. Yeah. Imagine what would happen About if you put your whole, you danced for Jesus 
or you put your all into praying and shouting and screaming, answer us. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do. This is the best part of the story. Around noontime, Elijah mocked them. I think that's the funniest thing. <laughs> Shame on me, though. I thought I it was mean, pretty. I thought it was pretty funny because I, I have that personality. Like I would do that. Yeah. Oh, what's the matter? Is he not answering you? He says. It says. He said, "Shout loudly, for he's a god." <laughs> maybe he's thinking it over. Maybe he has one. He has wandered away, or maybe he's on the road. Perhaps he's sleeping and will wake up. It's the truth. But then they said, it says that they shouted loudly and then they cut themselves because the shouting and the dancing wasn't working. So now we have to give blood. How come it's always like that? You know? Yeah, but you know, I'm going to tell you something. For me, that, it, that God still lives. Yeah. Because how many people... <clears throat> and I said this when I was studying it a couple weeks back to preach it. I said to the Lord, Lord, remember when I was younger and I would get, I would get angry. I would get hit. And I would be so angry with my dad that whatever I could find, I would just cut my arms, my legs, because I just didn't want to feel that anymore. I didn't know that. Right. But that's what that is. And God showed me that a couple of weeks ago, that God still lives and how many, and it's not just children, mm. it's adults. Right. We cut ourselves to... Stop the pain. To feel pain. To get off of what is here, what is in here. And Jesus is the only one that can do it. Yeah. Continue, sorry. Side it's okay. Note. I mean, <clears throat> I think that that's the problem, not to bunny trail off it, but that's the problem that it's always been, is that no one has been taught how to deal with the emotions that God has given us. Especially women, because what emotional means. We're just told to be quiet mm. and get over it or not to throw my husband under the bus or anything. But like Octavia was crying or whatever. And I forget. She was just sitting. She was, she was having a hard time. She was sitting at the kitchen table and she was crying really bad. And Josh said to me quietly, if I was crying like that, I would have been told to go to my room. See. I said, and what did that do for you? Well, I could come out of my room when I was done crying. But what did that do for you as an adult? Nothing. Because you don't know how to deal with your emotions. Because it shows that a child needs guidance on how to deal with emotions. They need co-regulation. They have to. That's why they need an adult to know how to regulate their own emotions so that they can help them learn how to regulate their emotions. That's how our bodies work. And nobody has been taught that. Nobody. Years and... But the problem is, is... Look at the families. The brokenness. Throughout all generations. Mm. It's not one person's fault, but it is the truth. Come on. You know what I mean? It's not pointing fingers at anybody, but it's just cycle after cycle after cycle. Even back here, they got so angry that this God wasn't answering them, so they cut themselves because their anger was so much they didn't know how to release it. You know what I mean? Yep. Anyway, that's just my two cents. It says in the it says in here that all afternoon. They kept on raving until the offering of the evening sacrifice. But there was no sound, no one answered, no one paid attention. And then Elijah said to all the people, and I find it interesting that it was the evening sacrifice. 
Why? Isn't that, I was reading it and I didn't write it down, but isn't that, like he waited until the evening because there was supposed to be an evening sacrifice, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was, I, am I thinking this wrong, but is that, was that, that wasn't a jubilee year, was it? That's a good question. I don't because know. Because I think I read somewhere that it was 50 years or something. I'd have to look. I don't have my phone. You know what that means though, right? A jubilee year. A, a start over, right? So everything that... Like if you had a loan or something, everything Everything was cleared. Over. Yeah. So because they, you know, poor people, they would... Let people borrow their children, borrow their right. sleeves, so to speak, and use them until the time of Jubilee came. Once Jubilee came, they were given back. How messed up was, was that, though? You know? I know. Like, talk about, <laughs> talk about like mental anguish. Right. You know? But... It's too bad we don't do stuff like that today. We would probably be, I just want to go bless you. <laughs> <laughs> it would be such a wonderful thing. <clears throat> and I think our country would be so much better. But what, what do I know? Let us go. But isn't that kind of like where we got the seven year thing from? Like after seven years, your debt is gone. might not be 50 but no your debt isn't gone after s you're supposed to let your your field rest oh yeah 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 for the jubilee yeah um so nothing for that whole year is to be right, used at all right let it just like on year 49 you stop right. up for year 50 so you just let it die isn't israel in a jubilee year right now i don't know it was I either really last year know. or this year. I don't know. We're just looking at the time. Anyway, so so Elijah said to all the people to come. So all the people approached him. Then he repaired the Lord's altar that had been torn down. Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the son of Jacob. Da 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 da. So he built the she altar. She said da 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 da. I don't want to read all of the whole chapter, but he built the altar. He. Then made a trench around the altar large enough to hold four gallons. Next, he arranged the wood, cut up the bull, which that's always so. All right. Did he die peacefully? Is what I want to know. <laughs> and placed it on the wood. He filled the four water pots with water to pour it on the offerings to be burned on the wood, which is so crazy to me because everybody knows, especially like if you live in the woods. You can't burn wet wood. It mm -hmm. don't burn. <laughs> so for him to have taken, it says, fill four pots. And then he said a second time. And then he said a second time. And then he said a third time. A second time and a third time. He did it four times, right? Yep. Yeah. So they poured it. It's just that's crazy to me. So the water ran all around the altar. And it says that he even filled the trench with water. It says that... At the time for offering the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet approached the altar and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, today let it be known that you are God in Israel and I am your servant and you, and that at your word I have done all these things. Answer me, Lord. Answer me so that this people will know that you, Yahweh, are God and that you have turned their hearts back. Then Yahweh's fire fell and consumed the burnt offerings, the wood, the stones, and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. When all the people saw it, they fell down, face down, and said, Yahweh, he is God, Yahweh, he is God. Mm. I'm just going to say to you <clears throat> at that point, <clears throat> as much as Elijah was... A powerful man of God for God and what a pivotal thing in his life keep reading and this brother had a major meltdown 
Oh yeah. A major meltdown. He's the one that off the, the words of a witch. Mm. He's the one that they the angel told him to go take a nap and eat. No, he woke up from a nap. The angel had food, and he did it twice. The second time, he said, "Get up, eat, for your journey is long." And he did. And then he found a cave, and he went in there. And I just, God said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Why are you not where you're supposed to be? And he said, I've been really jealous. My, my zeal for you, my passion for you has been on fire. But they killed everybody. All your prophets, they killed them. Mm. And I'm the only one left. And if anybody has had that woe is me or the enemy has come in like a flood and you just are broken before the Lord. You, you don't think he's with you or whatever. Right. He just had like this major mountaintop experience with mm. the Lord God. I mean, God showed up like nobody's business, man. Fire came down from heaven and consumed everything that was in, on that altar. The bull, the wood, the water, the stones, everything. It just turned to ash. And then God licked up the ashes and... That's so wild. And Jezebel says, and all the people kill the 850 false prophets. Right. They kill them. By Elijah's command, though. Then Elijah ordered yeah. them. And all of those were Jezebel's dudes. Right. So yeah, Jezebel, Jezebel, they ate at Jezebel's table. Mm -hmm. And Jezebel says, all she says, this is all she says, and she didn't even say, she wrote it. And he read it. But there had to be, I'm sorry, that, that demon that wasn't allowed to speak as they cut themselves mm. and called out, that demon had to be quiet because God said, right. well, now that demon was unleashed in the voice of what she wrote on paper. So as Elijah read it, and all it said was, if this time tomorrow I don't do to you what you've done to my prophets. That's all she said. But that demon was unleashed on that paper. And he read that and he was like. Bear took over, which is said, crazy because uh -oh. I know. <laughs> because in the beginning, when, what is it? When does Ahab come in? In 16? <clears throat> somewhere he it says that elijah left he went by the water wherever that's called he like he left and it doesn't say like he was a f like he probably was afraid for his life but he left and he wasn't like fearful in that sense of what you're talking about mm. he like trusted god and then he went to the 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 widow's house yeah and then, where did he go after that? That's when he came, from, that's where it came from, right? The widow was the second one. He was being fed by ravens. Ravens. And those were the dirtiest birds. Yes. That was last chapter, yeah. And the, I, you But nobody... I mean, like, he did all these things. And I believe, like, when I was reading the study Bible, the study on the chapter 16 about the ravens and everything, God had... Every time he, God told him to go to the next place, he didn't give him another direction until that, that season of it was done. Like he didn't that, tell him to go to right. the next place until the water was dried up. And then he told him to go to the widow. And then he didn't tell him to go leave the widow until whatever happens, I don't remember. <laughs> but that's, that's the truth. And he didn't have fear. It doesn't seem like he had a lot of fear, but then he sees this, it's like he was overwhelmed 
by the glory of God. And then all of a sudden you have this fear that you're going to run away because you just saw what happened. He didn't run until he received that letter. Right. That's what I mean. And then he, he, he as fast as he could, was out. <clears throat> That's and just it, crazy to me, though. And then he's in this cave and he hears this still, small voice, the Bible says. A still, small voice. It's like a beautiful sound. Mm. And when Elijah heard the sound, he wrapped his face in his cloak. He took his face and he wrapped it in his coat. Like, what did I do? What did I do? And he went and he stood out in, in the entrance of the cave because God said, I have something to say to you. And behold, a voice came and it said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And so he tells him, <clears throat> and an earthquake comes, God's not there. Fire comes, God's not there. Wind comes, God's not there. And then all of a sudden, You ever been smacked by God's gentle voice? Mm. <clears throat> I wish I was smacked with God's <laughs> gentle voice right now. But God gives him directions on what to do next. And when he does, he says this, and go anoint Elijah to take your place. Mm, right. But I don't think for one second God is done with Elijah. Because he didn't die. Right. He didn't die. He got taken up, right? Yeah. And a chariot and then he was no of more. fire, no less. Well, a man. chariot of fire, no Imagine less. That. Like, you want me to get on that? You sure? And there was people that saw him leave like that. Elisha is standing there mm. going, Father, Father. Fast forward to Jesus being transformed in complete and utter On the mountain. light. Mm. And he's on the mountain speaking to Elijah and Moses. Peter. <laughs> Peter and that his nonsense. <laughs> you know, no, that would be... Reprimanded by God. You know, though, that would be me. I would say something stupid like that. And then God would answer from heaven like, quiet. You better be quiet. <laughs> Listen. Oh, man. You know, so I told you... Before we started, I'm like in this really tight place and I hate it, man. All these years of being saved and God is stretching me. But I was on my way for my walk this morning and I really want to be low. I really want to have like a position of lowness in God where it's just complete and utter humility. Mm. I don't want to be like, hey, look at me. And I just feel and I I I said to the Lord today, I don't understand how you can use me in such a way where God, people can feel you, people can see you, and I feel nothing. Right? Mm. 
And Trisha, I, I tell you the truth, and Jesus Christ knows it, man. Today was, the last couple of days have been like the hottest of my entire walk with God. Hard. Hard. I can't pray. I can't worship. I can't. It just is not. I can't. I can't be fake. Mm, right. It's all or it's nothing. Right. And I went in my room and I don't know why. I went in my room. And I re I, I'm saying this because it reminds me of Elijah. He ran. And he put himself in a cave. I'm done. Yeah. I go in my room, my cave, and I just lay on the floor face down, not crying, weeping, like, <gasps> like weeping. No still small voice for me. But I have to believe that God was there holding me. Absolutely. I didn't feel him. I didn't care him. But he's got me in the fire. That's like your time's up. <laughs> your time's up. <laughs> but he has me. The refining fire, it ain't easy. It's not. But it's, it's like, it's like when Jesus was in the fire with the three Hebrew boys. But that's what he says. When we come to him, we're like gold. But there's times where you're going to have to go into the fire and I am going to turn up mm. the heat in your life and I am going to burn off these things that... made you who you are yeah and man I, listen you don't realize what you stuff yes. until you are in god living for him for real for real not i don't say it just to say it my life is Reflex. and i'm not saying that I screw up more than I get it right. And right. that's the truth. And Jesus knows it. And you can judge me how you want. But I am me. And so I just... But I realized... How in the world, after all these years, man... You're... You're bringing up things that they were foundational for me. Like, <laughs> you made me. Have to be independent and take care of myself. You allowed me to do that. I was a kid. I had to do that. Right. To survive. Right. And here we are. Okay. I don't want you to do that no more though. Okay. Huh? Right. But there has to be that you're stronger now than you were then to be, be able to deal with it now. You may not feel like you are. No, no, no. no. I, I want I to be independent, Father. Like, <laughs> thank I, you, I'm but good no, thank with you. that. <laughs> you I know? don't want to be a Proverbs 31 wife. No, ma'am. <laughs> and he said, I never <laughs> had the desire to be a Proverbs 31 woman. No. And he's saying, no. yes, this is what I've created you for. Yeah, well. Well, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> it's just incredible how God, if you let him, if you let him, he will. See, I don't, we have to wrap up, but I, I don't know how how it is for you or why all this stuff started coming up if it was like something you thought well, back in 2020 it was I literally asked God why am I like this oh and no no I didn't ask nothing and he's like oh okay here you go here's the big book of why 
And um, that was the hardest thing. I mean, I... And you may not have specifically said, why am I like this? But you may have said, I want to be closer to you. I, and you have said that to me. I want it to be, I think you said in the last, the last podcast... I don't want it to just be, this is what I do and this is what I do. Mm -hmm. Well, in order to get to that other level, you have to break off those things that made you who you were. Because you can't get into there without. You can't keep holding on to that. Even if you don't realize that you're holding on to it. Even if you realize, I didn't know I had that problem. Well, you do, and God's showing you. Half of it, I, and I, you know, I really, I stopped and I thought about this yesterday. Trisha, like, he allowed me to forget a lot of things. He allowed, it's like he, he did that to protect me for years. Right. I don't, th- I don't think about my childhood. I don't, I mean, I know a lot of stuff that I've gone through. The pain isn't there. Very first thing he had me do is call my uncle and tell him I forgave him for what he did to me. So it wasn't like a, he protected me. Right. So why at 53 I gotta go through this? Because you wanna Hello? be you wanna be different. <laughs> because you oh, asked, you've asked him that you wanted to be different. And that's the point. Like that's the point of this walk. Is that every single one of us are gonna have something if we realize it or don't. But we have to, in order to continue on that narrow road, all of our stuff isn't gonna fit on that narrow road. And he has to keep shaving it off. It reminds me of that the chisel. That chisel. Like, mm-hmm. that's what it reminds me of because... The skip men. Yeah, and uh. it's exactly how it is. Like, all of our life, this happened, and then this layer came through, and then this happened, and this other layer came through, and God has to get through all of those layers because we have to be able to fit down that narrow path to Jesus. I think it's a matter of whether or not we allow him to. That. Because I don't think that... I think... I mean, this hurts. Yeah, it does. This hurts, and I... Your poor father. It does hurt. But... Regardless if you asked for it, you didn't ask for it the way I asked for it, it doesn't matter. You want to be closer to Jesus. I think he longs for us to be healed. Right. He longs for us to be healed. And I think that that's where the whole new wine Mm. and old wine skin it can't right that's good i need i need for it to be new wine skin to hold the wine right and so all of the old has to come out but in the process you're so used to being the old wine skin it it just is really it's an uncomfortable situation it really is to to be be purged to be but on top of it to not feel the presence of god is hard I think but, he does it on purpose. Of course. Of course. But you have to remember that Jesus stood in the fire with those three. He, that's just the story that I keep coming to my mind. He didn't, he didn't save them from that fire. <laughs> they went into the fire. And when they went into the fire, he showed up. Mm. Anyway. Yep. That's and my that's defense. that. And that's that. And, that's, <laughs> and this is it. This is all we got. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think, though, he, at the end of the day, he really is just wonderful. He is. As, as savior, as king, as purger, as refiner. Mm. Because he's doing it for a reason. I think, too, let me just say this, because I don't think we realize just saying ready be careful when you sing worship songs when you are just singing to sing you don't realize what you're singing that's good no no that's maverick good. sings a song i love the song and i'm singing the song and it's called refiner 
I want to be consumed. I know that song. That, that's what it says. I want to be consumed. I want to be tried in fire. Right. Purify. Like. My bad. <laughs> Take my it bad. back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's rewind it. <laughs> No, but, it's true though. I mean, but that's the point of this walk though. Like, I'm sorry. I did ask for it because I don't want to be who that was. So whatever it is inside of me that makes me who I am, take it out. Hmm. Even as hard as it is because there's days that I just cry that, because I can't. For real. I Do I feel God every day? No, but I know he's there. And I don't know if it's just because I know he's there because the wind is there. Right. I can't see the wind, but I know it's there. And I know Jesus is there. And I know he's there because my daughter's seen an angel. I don't care what anyone says, even yeah. though she says it was a butterfly the size of daddy. That was an angel standing outside my house. Come on. Thank you. Because you're protecting it. Thank you. <laughs> Listen, you can't, you don't have to tell me. My, my, we do worship at church and random people will go, uh... Why did I hear the shofar out in the parking lot? Who, who blew the shofar? I'm like, nobody blew the shofar. You can't tell me. So good. You can't tell me. So. Anyway. Let us pray for people. Because Jesus, they are yours. Mm -hmm. And you love them. And wherever, Father, your sons and your daughters find themselves right now and in the in this is in this moment whether they're on a mountaintop or they're being refined as well father I pray that you would meet them those that are in a refining fire I pray that you would meet them where they are and I pray Jesus that they would stand even in the pain even in the mm -hmm. tears as you are purifying them and making them holy and righteous and true. I pray that they would trust the process. Just, and I pray, Father, that they would know that they are not alone. Yes. That God's people, if they was to be honest, we all go through it. Mm -hmm. The pastors that you are before, the pastors on TV, mm -hmm. Father, I pray that you would show them that you are with them and that no weapon that the enemy concocts against their lives will ever be able to take them out. Fill them with hope and love in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. That was a good one. You, you say that every week. It is. Every, every week I listen, I was like, hmm, that was a good one. <laughs> Uh, until next time. We are just kicking, kicking it with Jesus. Jesus. God bless you guys.